Join Pastor Rick every Thursday evening at 7 p.m. at KC for our Young Adults Gathering. It's a time to build friendships, explore faith, and navigate life's journey together in a supportive and vibrant community. Come as you are and let's embark on this exciting journey together. See you this Thursday at 7 p.m. at KC. If you would like to serve Greenway Church in any way, please see Mr. Dan Haggard. If you don't know who he is or can't get a hold of him during on Wednesday or Sundays, call the office and they will put you in touch with him. Or scan this QR code that takes you greenwaychurch.com partners in ministry. It's time for water baptism. Take the next step in your spiritual journey with us on Sunday, April 21st. Join us at 3.45 p.m. as we gather to celebrate this profound and symbolic act of faith. Please register at greenwaychurch.com slash events. What's going on, guys? Hey, this is Pastor Fred. I am one of the associate pastors here at Greenway Church. I have the awesome privilege of leading our men's ministry. And guess what? It's that time again. Yes, that time to enjoy a great breakfast together with men. We had over 90 men show up at our last breakfast, and it was exciting. And guys, we're going to have an amazing speaker this time. So please go on to our website at greenwaychurch.com and sign up. It is May 4th at 8 a.m., and it's going to be at our Hunters Creek campus. Guys, we're looking forward to enjoying a great breakfast. So if you were there the last time, please come back again. And if you missed it, don't miss it this time. Again, that's May 4th, 8 a.m. at our Hunters Creek campus. Go on and sign up, guys. I'm looking so forward to seeing you guys. God bless you all.
Well, good morning to you. Welcome to Greenway. I'm closing up service over at our other location. I'll be with you in just a little while. After I pray in just a moment, if you need prayer about anything, our pastoral prayer team and other prayer team leaders will be at the cross and they would love to pray with you as we go into this worship set. Let's pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We worship you. We adore you. And we look forward to hearing from you and sensing your presence today in our service. In Jesus' name, amen. Find somebody, tell them good morning. Let's worship God together. The Lord has done great things. Amen. Amen. And we're going to worship him corporately this morning. All of us in the building. Jehovah. Praise God. 
worship you this morning, Lord. You are so, so good. So, so good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your life, Lord God. Thank you for your life, Lord God. Reminds us every uh, throughout scripture, we see that we should be checking our hearts. Let's check our hearts right now. Heavenly Father, we come to you now. The Bible tells us that you judge a man and woman's heart, so that means you see right to our hearts now. We can look good on the outside, but inside, eating up with sin. And you tell us to check our hearts, so we do so here every Sunday, but we should do it every day. Forgive us of arrogance, pride, racism, lust, whatever it may be. May we be honest with you, knowing that we can't fool you. Search our hearts, O oh God. May you find hearts that are pure before you. And then also at this time, God, we also pray for those that are sick at home in hospital. We pray that you'll heal them. Those that are traveling away from us, bring them back to us again safely. We pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you remain standing with me just for a moment? And uh, you certainly saw the news last night where Iran launched uh, several missiles and drones towards Israel. The next 48 hours are absolutely critical, depending on what Israel does. Uh, listen, Israel is uh, certainly uh, uh, the center point of, of end times. And so next Sunday, I'll be talking about that. What are we to do with what's going on right now? What are we to think about that? So we'll talk about that next Sunday. 
But we need to pray for Israel, but not only Israel, but good people all over the Middle East. As you probably know that there are many Arabs, more Arabs actually that believe in Jesus as Messiah than, than Jewish people do. So even in Gaza Strip, there are Christians there. Uh, ultimately, we want to pray that everyone will find Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Islam is a, is a false religion, and it's telling others to put their hope in Muhammad and all of their teachings and so forth, but it's an absolute lie. There's only one true God, and that is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That's it. So maybe you extend your hand toward the flag. We're going to pray for Israel, pray for the Middle East. Oh, Father, we just pray right now. In the middle of all the turmoil that is going on, we are praying now for not only the people of Israel, but also people across the Middle East, God. Uh, there's uh, so much turmoil. I pray that the turmoil will cause them to look for answers. May they realize that answers are not in uh, the religion of their fathers, but it is in the truth of Jesus Christ. I pray for the Jewish people that you'll keep them safe. Open their eyes. I pray for others in Gaza or in Lebanon, Syria, Iran, and, and Iraq. Oh God, in other parts of the Middle East. May there be a great move of the Holy Spirit. May people turn to you, Jesus, during these difficult days. We pray for those in leadership, particularly in our country, our president and our generals, uh, Defense Department and others that are making decisions, the British as well, who are involved. I pray that we'll make the right decisions as we, uh, as we defend Israel. We pray these things now in the name of the strong Son of God, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Would you, would you give a big clap to the, to the choir over here? Yay, man, they do good. There's only, only one problem I see with the choir. I see about 10 roses and one thorn over there. We need some more thorns to join that. Bruce came to me a few months ago and said, hey, can we test the choir a little bit? So we're testing it a little bit once a month for a while, see how it goes. But they did a good job, didn't they? Give them a big clap. Yeah, very good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You may be seated unless you celebrated a birthday or anniversary since last Sunday. And if you did, we want to pray a blessing upon you. If you're watching online celebrating that birthday or anniversary, we're praying this blessing for you as well. Heavenly Father, for these that have celebrated birthdays and anniversaries this week, I pray, God, you will bless them. Bless them mentally, physically, spiritually, financially. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, receive your blessing. Amen. Happy anniversary. Happy birthday. Wow. If you are here for the first time, we just want to say welcome to Greenway Church. We're just honored that you're here. There's an information card right there in your bulletin. Maybe you take a moment, fill that information card out, and let us know how you found out about the church. Maybe, uh, maybe you uh, also have some prayer requests. My name is Wade, by the way. I'm the pastor here, and we're just honored that you are with us today. If you take that card and you leave it out at the information desk out there, they're going to give you uh, free drinks to our cafe here. Uh, our cafe has better... Is, now, I'm not a coffee drinker. But I hear our cafe has better coffee than Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks, anybody around. And it's cheap, too. So there you go. And if you celebrate that birthday or anniversary, you'll get your free cup as well. But if you get it every week, I'm going to notice. All right. You know. Uh, so uh, a couple quick things uh, that I'd like to let you know about. The first thing is this, that if you'd like to be baptized in water next Sunday right here, uh, you may not know this, but there's a water baptism pool right here on, in the stage. At 4 p.m., we will have water baptism. And you may say, well, uh, why do I need to be water baptized? Here's the reason. Jesus expected that you would. Now, water baptism does not save a person. What saves a person is our belief in Jesus. We know that. Going to church doesn't save you either. Giving money doesn't save you. Belief in Jesus does. Jesus, I believe that you're God. I'm a sinner. Forgive me. I make you my Lord and Savior. And following him, if we believe somebody or something, we follow it or them. And so you follow Jesus. That's, that's salvation. However, water baptism is a sign of the old person has been crucified, is dead, and a new person, because you receive Jesus, is, is there. You're also showing it is an outward sign to those around you of that decision that's taken place in your heart. So if you'd like to be water baptized, go to greenwaychurch.com, go to events, and then you'll see water baptism next Sunday, 4 p.m. I think you need to be here about 3.45. It'll give you all the details, modest shorts, dark jeans, uh, uh, modest uh, dark shorts, and then a dark top as well, and then we will baptize you in water. So if you'd like to do that, please go on and, and sign up. 
uh, for some people, they've asked me some questions. Well, what if I, I've already been baptized, but now I'm serious? In the Bible, there's, there's no, it doesn't say you can only be baptized once. I've been baptized every time I go to Israel. I go to the Jordan River and I get baptized. So there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so if you feel like you need to get baptized again, maybe you've just now gotten serious about God and you want to be baptized, maybe you would uh, consider doing that. Uh, we would love to have you be a part. It tells you everything that you need right there on the website and, and so forth. And then we'll have a little class before we do baptism. We'll talk about it just for a few minutes so that you fully understand what's going on. Some people also say, Can, are my children old enough to be water baptized? If they understand, I was baptized when I was 11. I was a little slow. I didn't probably understand very well. But at 11, I understood. Uh, so, uh, you know, if they've received Christ in their life, if they understand uh, you know, a new creature in Christ and all of that. If they can understand it, then they can be water baptized. But parents, you make that decision, uh, what, is, what is right for your kids. Well, if you attend Greenway Church, you know this, that we absolutely love missionaries. We support about 200 missionaries uh, and ministries around the world. And there's a, mini a missionary couple that you've met before uh, that they are back here today, and they're going to give us an update of what they are doing. So they work with a, a group of individuals that are overlooked in particularly many parts of the world. And they, they are those that are struggling with disabilities. And so they minister to people with disabilities around the world. Thomas and Angela Carpenter. Give them a big clap. Would you just do that? Come on up, you guys, if you would. So you all may remember Thomas, and uh, you may remember that he had COVID 30 days on a respirator, died, went to heaven, and uh, there's something about last night that you want to tell us about, Thomas. Yes, I would. I would like to thank the prayers of the church. You guys are powerful prayers. One of the first things that uh, I asked Angela to do when I heard the nurse and the doctor talking about, we need to take him to CCU, I said, Angela call my dad, call my brother, call my sister, and call Wade. Get them to pray in, because I knew that this church was a praying church, and I woke up hearing your prayers and other Christians praying. People don't ever think that your prayers aren't powerful. And then, my recovery, I woke up, I was completely paralyzed, couldn't talk, couldn't move anything, but I watched those uh, Bible studies, and then the prayer, like six hours later, that was my day. That was the only entertainment I really had was watching Greenway Church, basically. And so thank you for being part of me being here today. I wanted to be here, especially today, to say thank you. Four an fourth year anniversary for that. Yep. Wow. Praise God. <clears throat> if you guys remember, all during COVID that entire year, we prayed every single night. And a big part of those prayers were my old buddy Thomas. He and I have known each other since we were four years old. And I sure didn't want to lose, lose my buddy. And, 55 uh, years. We man. prayed. That's a long time. Don't tell them how old we are. No, no. Now they well, know I just wanted to explain why I was stumbling oh. up the steps. Oh, you know, okay. I'm getting there old. So. so tell us, Thomas, what do they all think I'm 29? Now you just blew it. Because I look so young. What? That's why. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Tell us a little bit about what you guys do around the well, world. Well, uh, Angela and I, we, we work with people with special needs, and we are privileged to help lead the Department of Special Needs Ministry for the World Missions of the Assemblies of God. And it's an exciting field. It's a big field. There are 1.3 billion people in the world with a special need. That's more than the population of the whole continent of Africa. And these are people who have never heard about Jesus before. But when we tell them about Jesus, they're very excited. The Muslims are saying, take our disability people. They, they serve no purpose in Islam. We go to other countries that have other religions that say, oh, they don't serve any purpose. But we believe God has a plan and a purpose for every life. And so yep. we go and we work with people with special needs. And we're seeing a great revival. Tell us a little bit about there's a particular country that we actually can't mention because it's sensitive, what God's doing there. Well, we are working with a missionary, Mike and Cindy Edson. They've been in this country for over 40 years now. And they've suffered persecution the whole way. It's a Muslim context country. It's a communist country. Any converts, except through a thing called the transition home. The transition home is a place where uh, they would go into the institutions and get people out who just simply had their eyes were crossed or they had a cleft palate or something like that. But yet they were institutionalized in some of the greatest filth you could imagine. And they were brought into a transition home and taught a skill, a life skill, a job. It was like a Votech school for 
people with special needs, welding, culinary, all sorts of varieties of stuff. And they're brought in, and they're taught about Jesus. Five days a week, they go to chapel. They have, it's an amazing, amazing place. And, and in 2022, the government came in and kidnapped a lot of the workers and a lot of the, um, the students there of the campus because they didn't want Muslims out doing Christian. I mean, they didn't want Christians out doing Muslims. And so they tried to take these people and put them in Muslim locations to do this in a Muslim context. It didn't work. That's, that's a surprise because sometimes it's just Jesus. Jesus is the only thing that makes things work. Yep. And so we went in there in October of 2023, and while we were there that week, just the Lord just graced us with this as they started returning people back that they had kidnapped. In January, we got a video back uh, from the missionaries, and we got to see the same government official who came in and kidnapped all those people they came back with certificates of excellence for this institution that they're working with. And they're saying, we want you to start 40 new transition centers in every major city in our country. Wow. Christian transition center in a place where persecution has been just terrible for the last 40 years. And so we're thankful. It's, it's really not a coincidence with God. 40 years of faithful service not getting any recognition, all of a sudden, 40 years later, boom. God is honoring them with 40 new places, one for every year. So we're thankful for what God's doing. And we're going to go back in October of this year, and we're, we're going to do a disability camp for special needs people, about 100 people. We've, we've had to cut the limit off at 100 people because this is the first camp. We don't know how it's going to work. So we, we didn't want to get too big too quick. And, and God's going to bless that. And we plan on making this an every year thing. We're going in Ecuador uh, in July to do the same kind of camp in the mountains of Ecuador. And uh, your own Janet Eccles Settles from uh, the Greenway Church is going to be our guest speaker. She's going to be our uh, keynote speaker for the week. And we're excited about that, too. So God's blessing us. Yeah, very good. Let's pray with them. Would you extend your hands their, their direction? Heavenly Father, I just thank you for Thomas and Angela. We thank you for their willingness to go and do things that a lot of us may not be able to do. Father, would you bless them? Would you keep them safe? Continue to heal Thomas from all of his physical ramifications after COVID. Strengthen his body. Be with this couple and protect them in every way. We pray these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Give them a big clap. Would you just do that? Wow. wow. Very good. Now, they were set to come here several months ago, but a couple weeks ago, I just felt impressed from the Holy Spirit to have Angela speak today. So she's going to share, and I've already heard her speak twice already this morning, and I believe that her message is something that you need to hear. Would you give uh, missionary extraordinaire Angela a big clap? Give her a big clap. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, what a complete privilege it is to be right here in person at Greenway. Thomas and I watch your service every week wherever we are, and we are blessed by that. Praise God for what he's doing among your church here, friends. This is just wonderful. We appreciate Wade and Julie so much. We don't get to see them very often, but they are the type of friends, and I, I hope you have this type of friend that even though you don't get to visit very often, you know that they are being faithful to the call that God has called them to do, and it encourages you to be faithful, right? We are all part of the body of Christ, so we should go around high-fiving each other and encouraging each other and saying, keep on keeping on in the work uh, that God has called you to do. And you have a work to do even if you don't stand on a platform. We're all missionaries. Did you know that? You are all called, and so it is just a tremendous honor to be here today. Well, the title of my message is simply Redemption Wins. Redemption wins, and I want to use as a launch verse Psalm 55, 18. David is contemplating what God has done for him. It sounds a lot like a prayer, maybe a prayer that you would pray today. Psalm 55, 18, he has redeemed my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. David said, you, Lord, you're the only one that could have done this. You're the only one that cared to come and to rescue me. You have redeemed my soul in peace 
from the battle that was against me. And he adds, there were many against me. Jesus, I just thank you for this moment, for this day. Father, I pray that each one of us right now would open our hearts to your word for you to speak to us. It's not my words, Lord. It's your word that changes our life. I pray that we would hear it today, that when we leave, we would remember it. Father, that we would live your word and then share it with someone else, I pray. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen, amen. Well, it was a Thursday, October the 20th, 2011, a pretty normal, busy school morning. Our oldest daughter was in her first year in college. Our next daughter was in high school, and our son was a big third grader. It was one of those mornings where it was, get your breakfast, get your books, get your bags. We are about to be late. Let's get out the door. Can any parents or grandparents relate to mornings like that? I'm the only out the window, and he saw parents taking their kids by the hand or carrying them in, and he said, oh, Mom, I got this. He did not want me to walk him in. I knew that he knew what door to go to, and I said, you got this, son. Go be a winner. And out the door he went. Well, on this morning, for some reason, I just felt compelled. I pulled out of the the parents' line and went over to the curb. I knew it was going to be three days before I saw Buck again. I was headed out of town for a conference. Truth is, I had done many conferences and had never felt like getting out, but here I was on this day. I just wanted one more hug. Buck and I wrapped up real good and tight. I cupped his face in my hands. I said, son, I'll see you on Saturday. Go be a winner. I love you. Go be a winner. And off like a shot, he went to the front door. Little did I know at eight o'clock that morning, the gift that Jesus had given me and compelling me to receive that one more hug is by four o'clock that afternoon, our son was in the presence of Jesus. It was an unavoidable car accident that took the earthly life of our eight-year-old son and of my precious mother-in-law as well. Now, I would imagine that every one of us in this church house today has experienced the unexpected. There's things that we look forward to in life, and maybe we plan for years for that wedding, months and months for that baby, and we look forward to these changes and seasons of life, but then maybe we receive a phone call. We receive some news, and we say, wait a minute, I wasn't expecting this. I wasn't looking forward to this. I never would have imagined this happening. Well, that was us. I want to tell you the verses that I camped out on in those early days, uh, almost 13 years ago. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9. If you don't know the address, you're going to recognize the verses. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9 says, We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Verse 9 says, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. I tell you the one phrase in in all of that good word that really jumped out at me at that time was the last phrase of verse 8, and it says, we are perplexed, but not in despair. I remember praying very honestly and saying, Lord, your word right here. This is me. I'm perplexed. I don't understand. But Lord, I, I can't be in despair. I can't be without hope because I know where my hope lies. I know where my son is. I know that one day we will be together forever in your presence, Father. Friends, can I tell you that God does not feel bad at you if you don't understand. 
You know, the world says, be your own person, make your own decisions, be who you want to be, when you want to be, and, and it's all always going to work out fine because it's what you want to do, so it'll always be the right answer. And well, friends, I tried trusting myself and saw where that got me. How about you? No, the Lord says, I want to come along beside you, just like David in the psalm. He says, Lord, I don't understand. The very people that I love and I've tried to defend and take care of, Lord, they've turned their back on me, Lord. They, they don't even care whether I live or die. Lord, I'm pouring out my soul to you. Would you come and help me? I'm pouring out the deepest thoughts and feelings of my heart, maybe secrets that I've never told anyone. You know, Jesus is a good secret keeper. So I poured out my heart to him, and Jesus very simply but lovingly said, Angela, I want to redeem your grief. I said, Lord, what, is that? what does that even mean? You want to redeem my grief? And he took me to Isaiah 43. Just that first verse, you need to read the whole passage, but Isaiah 43, 1. He starts out, he says, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob. You could put your name in there today. He who formed you, O Angela, put your name in there. Here's what he says, fear not. Really? Yeah, fear not. Did you know God is the only one who has the right or the authority to tell us it's going to be okay Fear not, because he is the only one who has made the provision to back up that statement with the help that we need. Thank the Lord for good friends and good family that are there for us from time to time. A good pastor, but you know there's going to be those dark nights when nobody else is around, and Jesus is the only one. He has to be our number one source. And in this verse, he gave me three promises Three reasons, if you're looking for three points to this sermon, here it is. I'm about to tell you. Here's the three reasons why I can tell you to fear not. And number one, there it is. I have redeemed you. He said, Angela, when you asked me to come into your heart, we did a beautiful exchange. He said, do you realize you, you had to make the choice to give me your heart. And with that came all the mess that you had, all the shame, all the pain, the sin and the sadness and the hopelessness and the fear and the worry, the anxiety, all of that. You chose to give that to me. And in exchange, I gave you eternal life. I gave you peace that passes understanding. I gave you forgiveness and the hope of heaven. What a beautiful exchange. I gave God my mess, and he gave me his glory. And he said, I died not only for your sin, but I died for every situation of your life. You have the right and the ability as a child of God to say, Lord, would you please redeem this situation? Just like you redeemed my heart, would you come as David was pouring out his soul? Lord, would you redeem my soul? Would you redeem all these hard places, all these layers of battles and things that I'm going through? God, would you come? I'm going to make a conscious choice to say, God, I give them over to you today. And when we give them over to the Lord and ask him to redeem them, then we have the expectation of something good in return that he's going to hear and he's going to answer. We might be looking for everything to just turn perfect overnight, but what Jesus does is he comes as he did with me and my grief and as he continues to do to this day. I said, Lord, I'm giving you my sorrow. I'm giving you my confusion God, I'm going to be honest. I'm, I am perplexed. I'm giving you all the things that I don't understand. I'm giving you my anger. I'm giving you my disappointment. Lord, I'm giving it over to you. And in return, Jesus began to fill up my heart with his peace. The word says that he'll give us that peace that passes understanding. He said, Angela, it's, it's okay to be joyful. 
I'm going to give you your joy back. I want to give you the comfort of the Holy Spirit so that you, in turn, can comfort someone else in a similar situation. I'm even going to show you a purpose for what you're going through. It reminded me of Romans 8.28 that says that all things, really, oh, all things can work together for good to them who love the Lord, to those who are called according to his purpose. And you might be thinking, what good, what good purpose could come from the death of a child's life? Friends, I'll be honest, I, I don't have another hour to tell you all of the amazing ways that God has redeemed the hurt in our hearts, all the good things that he has done, and we have witnessed it. I will tell you that on the very day that Buck passed away, redemption began the moment that Buck went to heaven. He had a smaller, younger cousin in the car with him that he wrapped his arms around him, and the paramedics let us know that if he would not have done that, we would have had a third fatality that day. That young man is 17 and going to graduate from high school next month, and we are so grateful for that. It's passing. He dropped to his knees, and he said, Oh, God, I want to know for sure that I'm ready to meet you. Lord, I want to see that little boy again. Friends, that is redemption, and redemption wins every time. Every time that we give it over to God. He can redeem it. So he said, number one, I have redeemed you. And secondly, I have called you by name. See, maybe you think, oh, it's, it's a big world. You know, he, he died for everybody. He doesn't really know who I am. Oh, it's just the opposite. He knows your name. He knows everything about you. He knows you very intimately and personally. You should read Psalms 139 sometime. He gives all the details that he knows what we're thinking. He knows when we sit or stand, he, we can't go anywhere away from his presence. He, he's always with us, and he knows everything about us. Someone has said that God knows what makes us tick. He knows what tickles us, and he knows what ticks us off. Right? He knows everything about us, and I think that today he's saying, I know your name, and I'm calling you by your name today. Come to me. I want to be there for you. I want to help you. Ultimately, this third one, I believe, seals the deal. He has said, I've redeemed you. I've called you by name. And then very simply, he says, you are mine. You are mine. He says, I want to be your father. I want to be there for you. I want to help you through every situation of life. The word says, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll never kick you when you're down. I'll never carry you along and then turn my back on you when I'm through you camping out on a lot of negative thoughts. Recognize that's not Jesus talking to you. That's the father of lies. Jesus loves you. He loves us all the same. We're all his favorites. Well, I just need to keep doing so many good things to make him love me more. You know, if I just, I just need to do this and do this. Well, we do want to be faithful to do what God has asked us to do. But we're not trying to get him to love us more because he already loves us, period. He loves us so much that he died for us. So all we have to do is receive that love. And let me tell you, friends, that was a convincing factor for me, again, in those early days. Oh, I poured out my soul, and maybe this morning you're considering your situation in your life. You know, a lot of people, we want life to be a big exclamation mark. Can you picture that? You know, we just want this easy, straight path. There it is. And I can, I can see how it's going to turn out. I see the, the dot at the end. Boy, all I've got to do is just run down this. Looky here what I did. Boom. That was easy. I, I knew how it was going to be all along. Is that really how life is? Maybe occasionally we have an exclamation point, a win. More often, life is a little bit more like a big question mark, right? 
We start out kind of at the tip of this question mark, and, and we're walking along, and well, where, where are we headed? We're going, and we, we look back. We're not for sure where we started. Well, Lord, I can't see the end. I, I don't know how this is going to turn out. I'm, I'm kind of over here out on the edge. I'm, I'm a little lost. Maybe I'm a little disappointed. See, I thought at this stage of life, I'd be further down the road by now. I thought maybe I'd, I'd, things would be different with my family. Maybe my job would be different. Maybe my, my kids would have their act together by now. Maybe my finance. We could say all of these things, and we say, Lord, I'm just not too sure. And the Lord says, hey, I want to come along beside you. I'm going to take you by the hand. I'm going to guide you. I see the big picture. I know how this is going to turn out. I'm here for you. I'm here to help you. I'm here to redeem all those questions, all those battles. I'm here to do a beautiful exchange. I want to give you peace in the place of your sorrow. What do you need Jesus to redeem in your life today? Maybe you have a beautiful relationship with the Lord. But maybe there is a family situation. Maybe there's a job situation going on. I could list many things this morning, but you know what the Lord is speaking to your heart right now. And I believe he just wants to come along beside you today and remind you, I can redeem that situation for you. It can be a win if you will just give it over to me. And let's do a beautiful exchange today. And in the place of all of the questions and the mess and the hurt, I can fill you up with what you need today. doesn't mean that everything magically changes just like that, but it means that he's with us. We can go with Jesus or we can go it alone. I think I want to go with Jesus today. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads right now. And friends, would you, in this moment, would you take hold of this moment right now? Because it's not between you and your neighbor. It's not, I'm going to give it over to you. Maybe I've carried this for years. Or maybe I just got a phone call last night. Lord, you know, Father, you know it from beginning to end. Friends, this morning, I'm going to ask you to do something Simple, but maybe hard, but just as an act to God that you say, God, I'm in agreement that I'm going to give this over to you. In a moment, I'm going to ask you just to simply stand. No one's going to come and ask 20 questions, no, not even one question. This is between you and the Lord. That you just say, today, God, I'm going to give all my questions, everything over to you, God, and I ask you to redeem it today. Why not today, friends? It's a win-win kind of prayer, let me tell you. It's a win-win. Lord, I'm, I'm praying right now for my friends here at Greenway. God, that we would make the choice today to give over to you, God, Everything in our hearts, in our souls, those deepest places, and ask you to redeem it today, Father. I'm believing you for it in the name of Jesus. Right now, friends, would you stand? Would you just simply stand right where you are? And now, whether you pray out loud or whether you pray in your heart, as I agree with you, would you just continue that one-on-one -on -one with the Lord and say right now today, here we go, Jesus, I give this over to you. Lord, I give you my grief. I give you my pain. I give you my frustration, my anger, my confusion. Lord, I give you my job. I give you my family. Lord, whatever it is, I give it over to you today. And now, Lord, would you redeem it? Would you redeem it, Father? In this hard place, God, would you fill me up with your spirit? Would you fill me up with a fresh hope, with a fresh peace? Come on, ask him for it today. Come on, ask him for it. Jesus, I need your touch. I can't make it on my own. And Lord, as I ask you to redeem it, I have the expectation of something good 
coming from my good heavenly father today. You're in my corner cheering me on. You love me. You want what's best for me, God. And I ask you for it today, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, keep asking him. Keep thanking him today. In the name of Jesus. Listen, if God can redeem the loss of a child, which is every parent's nightmare, then He can redeem the loss of a spouse. He can redeem the spouse that's walked out on you, the father that you never knew, the job that you lost. God can redeem it. Allow Him to do so in Christ's name. Amen. Let's worship together. Come on. in our lives we pray do whatever you want to father we surrender now in the name of jesus we surrender amen let's say this together i surrender three two one i surrender wow surrender to his redemption in our lives in christ's name amen you may be seated again if you're visiting today we're just so honored that you were here today and uh uh, please uh, know this, that here at Greenway Church, we just say you belong, and uh, we try to only do two things here at Greenway Church, know God and show God. We'll take up our tithe and offering in just a moment as we get ready to do so. Uh, you can give online, greenwaychurch.com. You can download the app, Greenway Church app, give that way or at the door. Thank you so much for your faithful giving, your finances, make it so that we can support missionaries like the two that you met today. 
Uh, also, I'd like to uh, just uh, remind you that we've got things going on this week. If you see in your flyer there, you see things happening. There's other information where we have Bible studies throughout the week for men and for women. We have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Wednesday night is a big deal around here. Come and eat for free, 530, 645. And then we break out into all of our classes. We've got things for teenagers, for children, as well as we come together for our unified service right here. Thursday night, we over at our Hunters Creek campus, we have uh, our Super Bowl champion, Pastor Fred Stokes. He leads our men's ministry and uh, has a men's Bible study on Thursday nights over at Hunters Creek, 7 p.m. And then also there's a ladies uh, meeting as well, a ladies group led by Pastor Marie Golia. Thursday nights over there, we also have uh, things for adult uh, Spanish-speaking individuals as well, children's choir and other things over there at our Hunters Creek campus on Thursday nights. Let's pray, shall we? Father, we just thank you that we can give back a portion of what you have given to us financially. We do pray for area churches as we always do. We pray, God, that you'll bless them. May they lead many people to you. And then, Father, we do pray uh, for those in leadership over us, particularly now in these difficult days, for our president, our congress, our governor, our mayor, our other city council members and others that lead us. If they don't know you, may they find you as Lord and Savior. And then, Father, we pray for an end to the war in Israel. We pray for an end to the war in Ukraine. We pray for persecuted Christians around the world. Statistics tell us between 10 and 15 people today will lose their life because of their faith in Jesus Christ in places like northern India. Be with them in their darkest hour. We lift them up to you right now. We pray these things humbly in Christ's name. Amen. Watch these announcements. If you would like to serve Greenway Church in any way, please see Mr. Dan Haggard. If you don't know who he is or can't get a hold of him during on Wednesday or Sundays, call the office and they will put you in touch with him. Or scan this QR code that takes you greenwaychurch.com partners in ministry. It's time for water baptism. Take the next step in your spiritual journey with us on Sunday, April 21st. Join us at 3.45 p.m. as we gather to celebrate the breakfast. And it was exciting. And guys, we're going to have an amazing speaker this time. So please go on to our website at greenwaychurch.com and sign up. It is May 4th at 8 a.m. and it's going to be at our Hunters Creek campus. Guys, we're looking forward to enjoying a great breakfast. So if you were there the last time, please come back again. And if you missed it, don't miss it this time. Again, that's May 4th, 8 a.m., at our Hunters Creek campus. Go on and sign up, guys. I'm looking so forward to seeing you guys. God bless you all. If this is your first time visiting Greenway Church, please go ahead and fill out that information card and bring it to the front desk to get your free gift. Thank you so much and have a blessed week.